She knew it was the third day when she woke. Even in the twists and tangles of the fever, her sense of time had remained unbroken, more than unbroken, wetted into a measure of such devastating accuracy that she'd wanted nothing more than to die quickly and be done with that merciless death-watch count of her last hours. And dying was quicker, according to the infomercials that spiralled out from the central planets when the virus first took hold there. Most people were gone by halfway through the second day. If you were still lingering beyond that midpoint, chances were you'd still be there after the fever had burned itself out in the last vicious surge on the third day. Jamie could taste blood in her mouth, bitter as old coins, and her back was aching with a dull, bed-bound creak of pain. But her bones were no longer splintering in some unseen vice, and there was none of the twisting vertigo that had flung her about inside relentless nightmares. In the throes of the fever, skeletal horses had leered at her, and an organ grinder, who was nothing but teeth and hands, had turned the handle faster and faster until it all blurred into nothingness. Her senses were slowly coming back online. She could hear her own ragged, uneven breathing, and she could smell the reek of sweat-stained sheets. She was alive. That realisation brought no leap of joy or relief. There was a nag of unease working its way around the edges of her thoughts. Survival was something she'd never dared hope for in those interminable days before the virus took hold on Solterre, when there'd be nothing to do but wait for the inevitable to hit their planet too. The disease's long incubation period meant that it had already reached every corner of settled space before the first symptoms appeared on the capital, Allegria. The messages from Allegria and the central worlds stopped a week or so before the sickness hit Solterre. The infomercials had already given way to blunt emergency transmissions. As the days passed, the silences between them grew longer, the messages shorter, less coherent, as though the airwaves were fraying. But by then, they knew what was coming. The virus was terminal in almost all cases. 99.9999%, one of the ranch hands had said. Jamie didn't know where he'd got that figure, but it spread and became fact. The day he said that was the day they all stopped looking at each other. How many of them could hope to make it into a minority so staggeringly small? The odds were akin to launching a paper plane off the planet's surface and hoping to hit a target back on Earth. Naught. Point naught, 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 one percent. She felt stiff and brittle, like she'd snap if she moved. Her senses had turned on her. She could hear all the noises that her home wasn't making. The generator at the main house was temperamental, and it wasn't unusual for it not to be running. But she should have been able to hear the distant hum of machinery from the logging station over the lake, or the farmhands calling to one another and swearing at the cattle. Instead, all she could hear was the soft, barely there, swish of the station's turbine and the squabbling of the immigrant sparrows in the trees behind the croft. That was it. No human sound. Survival was a one in a million chance. The virus was a near perfect killing machine, contagious as hell. It had a vicious little sting in its tail. It mutated with every reinfection. A single exposure was survivable, with luck. But it was as though it knew us. As the disease spread, people did what people always do. They clung and grabbed and mauled one another. They queued at the hospitals. They died in the waiting rooms. They clutched at their lovers and held on to their children. And the disease rampaged joyously, burning through thought and will, then flesh, and, at the very last, through bone, until there was nothing but dust, and no one left to mourn over it. Dust to dust, Jamie thought, rising slowly onto one elbow. The sun was slanting under the top edge of the window, illuminating the interior of the single-roomed croft that had been her home for the last three months. It was a standard settler's dwelling, 
flat-packed as part of some colonist family's baggage allowance when the first ships made their way through the void. Jamie's head was aching, and her mouth was so dry that she might as well have been dust herself. Had she breathed them in? The dead? Were they inside her now, clinging to her throat, hoping for some chance word that might carry them back to an echo of life? 99.9999%. She yanked herself back from the fall that lay beyond that thought. It might be different here. They'd had some warning, and they didn't live crushed up close against each other, like on the central worlds. But... the silence...